Okay, let's talk about factoring and specifically factoring things like this. This happens to be a trinomial or a quadratic trinomial or a polynomial. There's a lot of different ways we can describe this, but we're going to be talking about these trinomials. And a lot of students uh, struggle with factoring trinomials. It's kind of confusing to them. And uh, don't feel bad about that. I mean, when you're first learning algebra or, or learning factoring, you know, uh, this stuff can be confusing, right? Just because I know it, uh, and I've been doing this for decades, it doesn't make a difference. You can, you know, master this stuff as well. So anytime something is new to anyone, you know, at first it can be, uh, you know, difficult. But what I want to do is help you with factoring, specifically factoring trinomials. And if the way your um, teacher is teaching you, I'm going to give you uh, another way. And your teacher may be teaching you this way as well because there's a couple different approaches we can use to factor trinomials. And I'm going to show you the one that I like to uh, suggest to students when they're having difficulty with factoring. You need kind of like a procedure that you can follow every single time and get these uh, uh, things taken care of because factoring is probably one of the most if not the most critical skill you need to be successful in algebra. You must be able to factor all different types of situations in algebra. You won't be able to pass. So you got to get this down. So if you're struggling with factoring, stick around for a few minutes. I think this is going to help you out. Okay, so but uh, before we get going, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, pre-calculus. Uh, but I have many, many courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, High Set Task, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACE, or ALEX exam, CLEP exam, maybe a teacher certification exam like the Praxis or CBEST, I can help you out. And, um, of course, those are only a few of the exams um, that I cover in my test prep courses. So... Uh, if you need help with math for any particular type of exam, uh, just go to my course. I mean, just go to my uh, website, check out my full course catalog. If I don't have your exam, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously help those of you who are having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you're truly serious about wanting to learn mathematics, then you got to be serious about your note-taking. There are no sh shortcuts when it comes to learning mathematics. Uh, I've been teaching mathematics for decades, believe me, and I've been a student for many more decades beyond that. If there were shortcuts, believe me, I'm going to make YouTube videos about every single shortcut I know. And matter of fact, I do have a good amount of little tips and shortcut type of hacks that you want to know. So there are um, places for shortcuts and things like that and quick, you know, little uh, inside tricks for sure. However, note-taking is not one of them, okay? So uh, over decades of teaching math, I can always point with consistency that those students who have done uh, great in their math course almost always have great math notes. And the reverse is true. Those students who are like myself way back in the 1980s, what was I doing back in the 1980s? Well, I was taking notes but they had nothing to do with math, okay? The, uh, during math class, I was writing to my buddies and da-da-da-da-da. Uh, so you're going to have to get serious about your note-taking. So step number one is put away your cell phone if you have your cell phone. Listen, we all need our cell phones to stay in communication. I get that. But if you're looking at your cell phone in and out of trying to listen to your teacher, that's not going to work, okay? You're going to have to be 100% engaged on taking notes and that's hard work to stay focused i get it however that's what you're going to have to do now as you improve in your note taking you can use my notes to study from those would include pre-algebra algebra one geometry algebra two and trigonometry you can find the links to those notes in the description of this video now let's get to our lovely trinomial here i'm actually going to um, show you an, uh, another uh, i'm going to show you two techniques okay we're going to cover trinomials but if you think you can factor this guy easily factor it and whatever way you you um, have learned factoring if you're successful and you're able to factor stick with that technique okay however uh, if you are still lost and you need an alternative method uh, then stick around okay so let's talk about factoring in general so in algebra uh, factoring okay 
here are the kind of like the main things you need to kind of know. So the first thing is you need to know how to factor the greatest common factor. So if I have something like 2x squared plus 8x, you need to know how to factor something like this, right? So I would get factor out of 2x. That gives me an x here. That gives me a 4 here. This is an example of factoring out the greatest common factor. Now, after that, you need to know how to deal with trinomials, okay? This is what we're talking about in this video, all right? And there's two flavors of trinomials I'm going to show you here in a second, all right? There is what I like to call case one, and then there's a case two. But you got to get this down because there's a lot of trinomials in algebra. Then after that, you need to know like special factoring rules like the difference of two squares, and these guys come up as well, okay? So uh, no doubt about it. Okay, you have to know your special factoring rules, and then you, you can even get into like group factoring, uh, which we're going to actually do a little bit of uh, that in this particular video. So this is like a quick overview of the factoring skills you must have to be successful uh, in algebra. Okay, there's not one of these things that you can kind of like skip. You're like, oh yeah, I know this, but uh, I don't really know that, but I'll, maybe I can just, it's enough to get me through. Nope, unfortunately, it's not. Okay, so... After this video, if you need uh, more help with factoring, I have tons of videos in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist, okay, on the greatest common factor, trinomials, uh, special factoring techniques, all that stuff. Follow through, because if you can strengthen your factoring skills, believe me, everything's going to get better for you in algebra. So that's a good recommendation. Or maybe you want to sign up for my Algebra 1 course. Who knows? All right, so we're going to focus on these guys right here, trinomials, and we're going to start off... Um, I actually did a video yesterday, okay, on how to deal with trinomials that look like this. Now, this is what I would classify as a case one, okay, um, an easy kind of trinomial to deal with. Now, a case one is when there is a one in front of this leading term, okay, so our leading coefficient is a one. In other words, we don't have like 3x squared plus x minus 6. If you have a number other than one, that is a case two. I'm going to talk about that here in a second, okay? But we're going to deal with the case one. Uh, and I did this video, I did this actual problem yesterday. So if you watch this, you can kind of skip this part. But let's just kind of go through it again uh, because, you know, some of you uh, may not have watched this other video I've done on uh, uh, factoring trinomials yesterday. And I only talked about case one, not case two, but I'm going to do case two in this video. So here's the three steps you need to kind of um, follow to uh, uh, to do case ones. And this is going to be pretty close to the steps you're going to be taking to do case twos. We're going to multiply, multiply this times this. We're going to list out the factors of this number. In this case, it's negative six. And then we're going to find the factors and write our answer. This is effectively kind of what we're going to be doing somewhat for the case two as well. But let me show you how this works, okay? All right, so... Here, let me scroll down a bit more. Okay, so here is our one. Now it's kind of a bit redundant. It's going to be one times negative six. We're going to write that right here, negative six. Then we're going to write the factors of negative six. So always start with one. So one and six, one and six. I have to write, oh, they're always going to be pairs because uh, I can have negative one times six, that's negative six, or positive one times negative six. Then, of course, I can have 2 and 3, and 2 and 3, negative 2 times positive 3, or positive 2 times negative 3, and there are my factors of negative 6. Now, I need to select the right factors. If this thing is factable, okay, um, then I will have my answer over here. But let me just um, uh, state something here. You might have something like this, okay, and if you're trying to factor this guy right here, this right here is not factable. This is what we call prime, okay? Just like this number. Hey, can I factor 10? Yeah, that's 2 and 5. That's factable. But how about 7? No, that's just 1 times 7. This is a prime number. So just like um, numbers can be prime, polynomials can be prime as well. So there's no guarantee that these things are going to be factable. But if it is, if this trinomial is factable, here is what you're looking for. So we need to go to our middle term. Now, uh, these trinomials need to be written from to highest and lowest power. We call that standard form. Okay, so I don't want to miss any details here. X squared, X, and a number. Of course, this could be Y squared, Y, and a number. doesn't make a difference, but I'm interested in this middle coefficient, the one in front of the X, the one in front of the Y, whatever the case is, and this one is a positive 1. 
So I'm looking at these factors right here. And what we're doing is we're looking at the sum of these factors. So negative 1 plus 6 is 5. 1 plus negative 6 is negative 5. Uh, 2, negative 2 and 3, this is positive 1. And 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. Now, this might seem like a lot of work from, uh, for, you know, right now. Uh, but believe me when I tell you, you'll get, you'll, um, as you practice this technique, this will be much easier, okay? So what we're looking for is the factors that add up to a positive 1. Okay, so can we spot those factors? Yep, it's these guys right here. Negative 2 plus 3 equals positive 1. So that is our answer, okay? These guys right here. So remember, when you're factoring trinomials, and I'm expecting you have some basic understanding, what you're going to have is your x right here, okay, and another x right there. And then what are we going to put in this one? We're going to put a negative 2 here, and we're going to put a positive 3 there, and we are done, okay? So that's how we deal with case one. And you'll get better at this, okay? I'm kind of spelling out, you know, in each, you know, little detailed step. But as you practice this, you'll, you know, this, you'll get comfortable. But this is a procedure. This is a, a recipe you can follow every single time, you know, without confusion to get the right answer. All right. Now let's take a look at a case two because case two is more involved. All right. If you want to challenge yourself, we have our case two uh, trinomial quadratic trinomial, and the reason it's case two, because our leading coefficient is six, it's not one, okay? So these are going to be a little bit more involved. Now, go ahead and see if you can factor this. This is the answer, okay? 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 4. So if you can factor this in your own way and come up with this and, you know, under, do this easily and effectively, you know, don't, you don't, this shouldn't take you 10 minutes to do, um, then fine, okay? Stick with that technique. But if you are struggling again with these kind of problems, then uh, we're going to get into this recipe that you can follow every single time. And it's going to be very similar to what I just showed you with the case one. All right, so let's get to it. All right, so first thing is we're going to multiply. We're going to take that six and we're going to multiply by negative four, just like we did uh, that uh, with the case ones, but this is case two. So six times negative four, negative 24. Then we're going to list the factors of negative 24. So always start with one and then just in, kind of increase your factors this way. So 1 times 24, and you're always, and you're always writing pairs, okay? So 1 and 24, 1 and 24, negative, negative, to make a negative 24. Then we have 2 and 12, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 3 and 8, and then you can see here I have 4 and 6 and 4 and 6. Now, when you get better at this, what you're looking for, you're thinking, okay, I'm looking for pairs of factors that add up to what? That middle number. So here, you can just disregard this because there's no way these are going to add up to a negative 5, right? Like this, you know, 2 uh, and 12, you can't get a negative 5 from 2 and 12, all right? So you're looking down, you're just quickly thinking about the factors of negative 24, and you don't even have to write all these down when you get better at this. You're just thinking to yourself, oh, 3 and 8, oh yeah, 3 and 8, I can get a 5 from. So which one is it going to be? Is it going to be positive 3 times negative 8 or negative 3 times positive 8? And positive 3 plus negative 8 is negative 5, and that's what I need, okay? So this is what I'm talking about. I'm writing everything out here. But when you get better at this, you're just thinking of factors of negative 24. That could possibly add up to uh, that negative 5. So you want to use the combination of 8 and 3, okay? All right, so we're going to use positive 3 and negative 8. And how? what are we going to do with this now? Well, this is where this is... Um, different than the case one. In case one, we would just go ahead and be able to kind of get our answer, but that's not what we're going to do. So we're going to re uh, rewrite this negative 5x. We're going to write it as 3x minus 8x, okay? And then this 3 um, is this 3x, and this negative 8 is ne negative 8x, but if you look at 3x and minus 8x, it's the same thing as negative 5x, okay? So we're not breaking the problem. I'm just uh, writing negative 5x differently, okay? 5x is the same thing as 3x minus 8x. But why am I doing that? Well, this is going to uh, be the secret to uh, factoring this. What I'm going to do next is something called group factoring. I'm going to uh, factor out the greatest common factor from the first two and the greatest common factor from the second uh, two, okay? So I have this this pair, okay, these terms, and these terms, 
and I'm going to factor out the GCF. So let's go ahead and do that now. So 6x, uh, uh, 6x squared plus 3x, I can factor out a 3x. That leaves me with 2x plus 1. So right here, this 2x plus 1, you have to instantaneously think this thing, this same thing better show up over here if you've done this correct and this thing is factorable. So I, I'm looking at negative 8x minus 4. What can I factor out? I can factor out a negative 4 because negative 4 times 2x is negative 8x. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 4. And I'm left with a 2x plus 1. You should always have these same factors. Now I could factor out a group factoring 2x plus 1. And what is my other binomial? It's 3x minus 4 right there. Okay, 3x minus 4. Now this might seem a little bit confusing, but trust me, um, I've seen countless students really improve with factoring by just knowing this little recipe. Okay, now of course you're just learning it. And I'm first, ex you know, I'm explaining this to you, uh, but this is going to work for uh, case one, case two. These two procedures will work every single time. If those trinomials are factorable, this is going to work. And you, you know, again. You're just going to follow this procedure. You're going to look for those pairs of factors. You're just going to, you know, get really, really good at this. Now, the other technique is kind of like a guess and check method where you kind of split this and you're kind of looking for pairs. That's a good technique as well. Um, however, students struggle with that because sometimes you have to create various uh, combinations. You have to try a number here, try a number there, try a number there, try a number there, and they get frustrated and you know, they're trying different combinations and they still can't find the factors. So with the easy problems, it's okay. But this technique for the more challenging problems can get confusing. But again, this uh, procedure I'm giving you is uh, bulletproof, okay? It's going to work every single time, okay? So if you are struggling with factoring trinomials, you know, this is the technique for you, all right? And I've been doing this for a long time. And if you can take care of this part of your factoring life, all right, the, dealing with the trinomials, that's going to be great. And um, right here, all right, as you've seen, you're going to have to be pretty good with the GCF. So what I would say, if you're struggling with factoring, quickly learn, okay, or if you already know how to factor uh, the GCF out, that's great. If you don't, if you're struggling a bit with here, go back, master this. It's not that difficult, and then come back to these techniques I talked to you about. And, and now you've got two of kind of like the you know three things the group factoring you're kind of learning in here really all you're you're going to have to know is these special factoring rules which don't come up as often kind of frequently but not as you know, as much as I would say these two things okay all right so hopefully this is going to help you out with your factoring struggles okay here's the bottom line whatever the case is whatever you're having difficulty is there's always a way to overcome it. Okay, that's the main point of all my videos. Uh, and so if you feel like, you know what, this gives you some hope in your factoring problems. And if you feel like, yeah, I'm going to try this, please, please do try this. It's going to work. Okay. And if that is the case, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have over a thousand videos uh, on my channel, Basic to Advanced Mathematics. My goal always is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Nobody should be failing mathematics. Okay. If you're doing your part, and you got to do your part, okay? It's uh, you got to take notes. You got to be listening and talking to your math teacher. That's like the minimum. But beyond that, okay, sometimes you're going to have difficulty, you know, and, and you need extra help. And that's perfectly okay. Don't feel bad about that. So you're going to have to take the initiative, take the responsibility, and go look for help. And, and these days, there's so much free uh, help out there. If you like my teaching style, I have tons of content. I'm posting stuff all the time. So, you know, take advantage of my uh, videos or someone else's. But go get the help you need, all right? But in terms of my stuff, um, uh, my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so for factoring, I would recommend like my Algebra 1 course. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.